Hey folks, hey superstars, hey this is Wesley Billion Dollar Virgin here. Hey, welcome to the podcast. Welcome to the Millionaire Midnight Rant. Okay, I haven't been lying in the last three days. Been busy, of course. Took a trip, quick trip to Vegas. Had to celebrate my boo's birthday here, but I'm back with you now. Hey guys, how are you? Yeah, I'm early tonight. It's 11:49 a.m. And I thought I would go early a bit here. I have some time. I've been working. But now, um, I'm here for you. And the title is Ask Your Favorite Millionaire Anything here. And listen, if you're brand new to the podcast, you know, maybe you're a brand new woman, a man, entrepreneur, a student, or just a person that's trying to get some direction in life here. I'm Wesley, billion dollar virgin. I'm a self-made millionaire from Houston, Texas. Made my first million at the age of 35. Was pretty. I grew up poor, average parents. They are pastors of a church, and I just grew up pretty normal, average, like most of you. But over the years, I became a multimillionaire. And it's not because I'm smart or super intelligent. It's because I really, I truly understand the powers of the mind um, really understand how to take a thought or an idea okay and be able to materialize that to take what's intangible and to make it physical okay and go through that process because i want you to really think about this where you are and where you want to be there's a gap in between right and where you are you're trying to discover solutions and answers to navigate that gap to be where you want to be, okay? And I have figured out how, I have like discovered or found a solution on how to do that very quickly with anything that I do in life. Now, and not just money, relationship, relationships with my children as a father. I have... Um, mastered how to have an ideal about something have a desire and to make the desire real and i go live so i can give you answers so you don't have to make mistakes and so you don't have to wait years and decades to achieve your result does that make sense i'm here to tell you that the mind the powers of the mind is real And if you learn how to utilize your mind, if you learn how to utilize your emotions and you can carve out a just a beautiful, gorgeous life because I'm so blessed and grateful just to be living, just to have accomplished and have achieved so much in my life. At such a young age. And I'm trying to give you that same gift. And that same blessing as well. So go ahead and share this video out. Like it. If you don't mind. If you like anything about me. um, Hit the like button here. Tonight I'm going to be direct. Brutal. I'm going to be brutally honest. I'm not going to bullshit with you. I'm not going to try to sell you anything. I'm not going to ask for any offering. (laughs) I'm just here to give genuine advice. To become rich and wealthy. And learning how to navigate the world in a way that you'll never want for anything. You'll be the leader of your pack. You'll learn how to have people listen to you. Have people work for you. Have people believe in you. And uh, think of you as the person they, that they will choose to admire. And in the process to put tons of money in the bank account for you as well. So go ahead and comment your questions below here, or you can go ahead and comment your name. Thanks for the shares and likes. I know I'm early here, but as people log on here, go ahead and start um, typing your questions here. Uh, Okay. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, Wes. I really like all your videos. Can you please... Tell us why visualizations don't work for some people. What can they be doing wrong? Okay. So, first of all, um, he's talking about uh, visualizing. 
you know, if you're into meditation, the metaphysical law of attraction, self-help stuff, then you understand maybe, you know, visualization means to create an image in the mind and to be able to attract it. So I would have to disagree with you about when you say it doesn't work. It does. What you don't realize that we all visualize. Many of us, unfortunately, when we think about visualization, we only think about the positive or the optimism or the things that we want. But visualization is just like not just positive things. It's negative things, too. It's the things that we don't want. And what happens to a ton of people, they tend to visualize what they don't want. I give an example. A woman who have been with men that are cheaters and liars she may come to the conclusion that men are cheaters and liars. So, she, so she'll say, well, I don't want a cheater. I don't want a liar. You may say, what kind of man do you want? Well, I don't want a cheater. I don't want a liar. So what she don't realize, because it's so unconscious, that she's visualizing cheaters and liars, even though she says she don't want it. You might say, I don't want to be broke again. But what you don't realize, to not be broke is to visualize being broke. Does that make sense? Because the word broke itself is a trigger word that creates an image of your mind, such as not having enough money, maybe for food, not enough money for rent, not having enough money for your debt, your credit cards for school. Make sense? So we all visualize. That's how everything happens in the world. Even the bed that you land on, someone had to visualize that the phone that's in your hand, before that was created by Steve Jobs, he had to have a vision of it, right? Right? A vision, he had to have a picture in his mind of what that may look like. Make sense? And then he transcended that to paper and then to maybe a computer diagram. And he created what is called phone. So to answer your question, everything that you do, all of us, even you, we all visualize. But unfortunately, many of us visualize what we don't want. Does that make sense? You might say, I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of being fat. I'm tired of this not working. But for you to be tired of something, you have to visualize it. There's a picture that's associated to your stress, to your anxiety, to your disappointments, to your depression. You may say, I'm depressed. Well, you're depressed about something. And you might say, your problems. So it's, you have visualizations of getting fired from your job. Um, your parents not supporting you, your children's acting up, your husband not acting right, your wife not acting right, or maybe you're trying to get the business to work, but you keep spending money and invest the money and not receiving any money. So that's, these are images that are in your mind. Does that make sense? So we all visualize, but however, because see, this stuff is not taught in school. So I'm not here to beat you up or blame you because I know almost 99% of you don't understand it because we didn't grow up that way. You know, when I was in school, I wasn't taught that I can visualize what I want and I can make it happen. You know, I just, I didn't think that way because I wasn't taught that. So as children, we just navigate through the world, but not really thinking about why things are happening to us. We just think that things happen. But we're never taught, well, this is why you're having a tough time with your teacher. This is why your friends don't like. This is why they teach. This is why this is happening to you, right? So let me help you out here. So a better way to visualize is to visualize what you want. Sounds very simple, right? It's just to visualize what you want out of life, okay? If, a, if I ask a woman, hey, what do you want? She's been cheated on a lot too. What do you want? Well, I want a loyal, nice, caring, respectful, beautiful man. Okay? We don't need to talk about all the negative, all the cynical things about a man. Same thing if you want more money. You don't say, well, I don't want to be broken. I don't want to lose money. Right? Because you're visualizing losing money. What you say is, I want a business that's profitable. I want a business that I am a leader of the business and I'm able to make a contribution to my employee's life and I'm able to help my customers, you, you see, and get paid in the process. 
Does that make sense? Those are two different images. So, when you begin to visualize what you want, you start to attract things in life that will start to match your desire. Now, your question is, well, or you might be thinking, oh, yes, I did that. I just know I can read your mind right now. I know a ton of you are thinking, well, I did that already. I tried to visualize. I tried to visualize. I tried to visualize. It didn't work. I tried to visualize. Even that statement, listen, even that statement, I tried to do it and it didn't work, is a visualization. You get it? Yeah, like you're visualizing. You tried it. You you saw yourself try it. And you can't, you have come to the conclusion that it didn't work. So that's what you're visualizing. You're visualizing trying things and it don't work. I'm trying things that it don't work. I'm trying things that it don't work. So repeatedly, you know, through repetition, your brain just feels that, well, this is exactly what this person wants. He's trying something, but it doesn't work. So we're going to repeat that. What I want you to understand is you got to have some patience with the mind itself. Let me go a little bit deeper. Come with the word, go deeper, Wes. Because I know some of you still don't get it. Your brain is basically a hard drive. Which means is the brain has to be programmed. Now the question is this, how is the brain programmed? Like how, you got to really think about it for a second. How does your brain have thoughts and beliefs? Thoughts and beliefs have to come from somewhere. When you were born from your mama's vagina... Right? You had a clear mind. You knew nothing. Okay? So thoughts, beliefs, attitudes, personalities, these things have to be programmed. Now, who, how, how, how does a baby get programmed? Through the parents. Grandparents. Friends. Brother. Sister. Go to school. Students. Their friends. Their peers. TV social media this is all programming you okay so you understand that which means is if you're 30 years old right now 40 or 50 or even older and now you're deciding to reprogram yourself now you're making a decision now you understand that when you visualize that you have to be intentional and just think about what you want instead of what you don't want well it may take a little time for your brain to accept the belief does that make sense? Let me give you a better example. If I ask you right now, what's your name? I want everybody to comment their name below. And I'm going to show you something. It's a trick. It's powerful, though, because it gives you a metaphor to really understand how the brain works. I want everybody to write their name below. Your first name is fine. Go ahead and do that. i give you 10 seconds. Just write your name one time. That's all I want you to do. Comment under the video and write your name one time. Okay? You did it? Just write your name one time. Now watch this. And I'm going to show you how powerful the brain is and why some people are poor some people are rich and why some people have a very hard time changing. Listen, I want you to forget your name. Go ahead. Forget your name. I don't want you to remember your name at all. Can you do it? Can you forget your name? Try. Try to forget your name right now, Corey. Try. Try to forget your name right now, Jules, Nicole, Jordy. You can't do it, huh? You're like, I can't, I can't. Exactly. Well, the reason why you can't forget your name, think about how many times you've been called this name from a baby to your age today. So that's an example of when you're trying to change beliefs. There are some beliefs inside of you. Unfortunately, would never change. Um, just some beliefs, just it'll never go away. Like you'll probably never forget your name unless you go into some deep hypnosis or they put you in an environment and torture you and make you. It, I mean, it's ways to do it. But... It's almost impossible without the proper motivation you would ever forget your name. So think about the belief that you're trying to acquire now that you're going to be successful, 
that you're going to be a millionaire, that you're going to do all these great things in life. The problem is you don't believe that yet. You want to believe it. If I ask everybody tonight, hey, how many of you believe you're going to be a millionaire in the next five to ten years? Everybody would say yes. Okay? Because belief itself, even as the definition, um, it's, it doesn't support what, what people actually do. You can say, well, I believe I'm going to be a millionaire and you don't become a millionaire. Then the question is, well, I, why did not become a millionaire? Because to believe it's not enough. You have to commit to something. Commitment is what allows people to be great in whatever niche, sport, or industry. It's commitment. It's not like really belief. Because we all can say, I believe something. Oh, I believe I'm going to make a million. I believe I'm going to make 10000 I believe I'm going to find the man of my dreams. I believe, well, I believe I'm going to be skinny. I believe I'm going to have muscles around my body. I mean, anybody can say they believe something. But the commitment. Now, this is... A deeper understanding of what belief really is. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? And what all of you don't understand is, at this moment now, when you're trying to believe something new, there's a gap. Which means it may take you some time to believe what you're trying to really believe. It may take you time to commit to it. Because to believe something is to really to commit to something. That's how you really define a person's belief. Not what they say. It's kind of what they do and the actions that they're taking. And the actions that they take regardless of the external chaos or problems or challenges. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Okay? So when you talk about visualization, which I visualize all the time. I give you an example. Like I'm worth $40 million today. I'm getting ready to buy me an STO Hurricane. No, STO Lamborghini tomorrow. You're going to see it. I'm sure you, it's, it's badass, by the way. And I'm just going to buy it. You know, you, you know, once you start understanding money, it's just so easy to get everything, honestly. But that's why I'm here to teach it. Check this out. So, um, when I visualize, I'm in bed right now, right? So, I close my eyes and I just think about what I want to do tomorrow. That's it. I just think about what I want. That's it. When I want to wake up, what do I want to do? I go through my workout routine in my mind. What I'm going to do, what I'm going to work on. Like tomorrow, plan is to do shoulders. So I see myself working out shoulders. Maybe I do a Pilates session. I'm going to wake up in the morning. I'm going to see that. I'm going to spend $1,000 in ads, but I'm going to make $3,000. I'm going to do a one to three tomorrow with my ad campaigns, with my products that I have online. I see my business partner, Ariella, the VP. They're going to do like $50,000 tomorrow. That's going to be awesome as well. I'm planning my trip right now to Hong Kong. Got to get an, another hotel. And I mean, I'm just, I'm visualizing it. Uh, I'm, I'm visualizing these rants, a million people per day watching the podcast. And that's grateful. Visualizing myself eating very healthy food that is supportive to the longevity of my body. Um, very instrumental in to escalate and elevating my telomeres to keep me young, virile, amazing, exciting, and with full of energy. Now I'm visualizing it. I'm visualizing a million dollars per day coming into my bank account every single day. Okay? Now, this is what I want you to understand. And we are understand it. Like, we understand that it may not happen tomorrow, Right? But even though we understand it, sometimes we get impatient or pissed off because it's not happening. What I want you to understand, even impatience or when you get a little upset when you've been doing something for a long time, you're like, man, I'm not. This is unfair. This is not happening. What you don't realize is that you're creating that storyline like it's you creating the storyline. Like I know some people right now, they want to be millionaires. They're not a millionaire yet. So I, every once in a while they get upset. Oh, it's unfair. This is not right. And I've been doing this. But it's almost like a crying baby. But what they don't realize, just like a crying baby, they're creating a story in their mind why this is not working. They were like, well, this should be working faster. But listen, you don't know. Like, no one knows when they're going to hit what, uh, what level. Like, I don't know when I'm going to be a billionaire. I didn't know when I was going to be a million. I don't know the age. 
I don't know. Like you, you don't know when you're going to have this major breakthrough and have millions of dollars in your bank account and flying around the world first. I mean, shit, no one knows. But what you do know is every activity, every decision, everything that you allow inside of your life to program that mind of yours, it's going to either move you closer to the goal or away from the goal. Right? That's the, only, that's the best way to think about it. So when you think about your day, on your day-to-day living, think about what am I doing every day to move myself closer to the goal? Because any time that you're doing stuff that's moving you away from the goal, well, that's what's going to cause, uh, that, that, that's going to create the gap to increase. Does that make sense? When you start to view your activities, your day-to-day activities of the things that you want are the things that align with your goal and dream, then you're able to achieve it. But you don't know when. You have to get out of this whole, well, when it's going to happen. This is what stops a lot of you. And this is what screws up a lot of you, your life. You get down in depression, sad for no reason because you've created this bullshit story that you should have been a millionaire right now. Some of you feel... That you should be further along in life right now, correct? Some of you, some of you women feel like you should be married with kids right now. Some of you men feel like you should already hit your first million right now. You should feel like you shouldn't be at the job right now. But you are. And I want you to understand something. Speaking objectively, you're only where you are right now in life because of your past decisions, your activities, the things that you've exposed yourself to, the conversations that you're having with people, the places that you're going, the social media that you're watching, all this is programming you unconsciously. Like, without your awareness, because you're not really paying attention on an unconscious level, but it's, it's, it's programming you to believe and to think a certain way. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? So that's why you have a ton of people, you know, so many of you, like, you feel like, I'm confused. I don't get it. I don't understand why can I figure this out. I don't understand why I can't be motivated. Why why can I be consistent? See, to me, those questions are very they're, they're questions of stupidity, honestly. And I'm not throwing rocks at you, but think about it for a second. How do you answer a person that says, "Well, I don't know why I just can't stay motivated," when it's them? How do you not know why you can't get yourself to do something when it's you? It is your responsibility to get yourself to do whatever's necessary. Anybody says, well, I don't know why I lack motivation. I don't know why I can't be disciplined. It's because that person has a disorganized mind. And a person with a disorganized mind, they have disorganized conversations with themselves. That's what you're doing. I mean, listen, it's the truth. You're having this disorganized conversation with yourself. I don't know. I don't know why. Right? That's like that's like the um the phrase garbage in, garbage out. Many of you have garbage minds. That's why you speak the way that you speak. That's why you say some of the things you say. Oh, I don't know why I'm not motivated. I know why I can't stay consistent. I don't know why I keep eating this food and I know I need to lose weight. I don't know why I can't get myself to go to the gym when I'm paying for this membership. I don't know why I keep sabotaging this relationship. I don't know why you keep acting like this. Why do I keep making these same mistakes? See, that's a person that has a garbage mind. Because the information that's coming out of your mouth, such as why this is happening, but it's you. It's you that's doing the thing that's creating the chaos that you're trying to avoid. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Comment below. I needed this, Wes. I know you need it. That's why I'm giving it to you. Now, think about it for a second. You know, how many of you have ever said, well, I'm not motivated. Why well, can't be disciplined? Why well, I haven't made my million yet? I've been in this thing for five years. Why does it happen to me? Why am I struggling? Those are idiotic questions. The reason why those are idiotic questions, because it is you that has to do what needs to be done. So how do you ask yourself why you can't be motivated when it's only one you? You're like asking yourself as if you're two people. It's just you. You know why you're not disciplined? Because you don't want to be fucking disciplined. 
You know you, why you're not committed? Because you don't want to be committed. You know why you're not motivated to do shit? Because you don't want to do it. You don't want to be motivated. That's just the truth. You know why you're not a million? Because you don't want to be. You don't want to be a millionaire. Not really. You know why, women, you're not in a successful relationship with a man? Because you don't want to be. You don't really want to be. You may say, no, 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 you don't. Anything that, I, listen, how many of you drink? Be honest. How many of you smoke weed? You, some of you do. Vape. Why do you do those things? Even though they are destroying your body, right? Why do you do those? Because you want to. Because they make you feel good. That's why. Simple. Because you want to do it. Well, I don't know why I can't quit smoking. Well, how can I stop smoking? Just put the fucking cigarette down. Just don't pick it up. Well, it's not that easy. See, listen. You know, if you just listen to people, they'll, they'll tell you everything about A person will say it's not that easy. But the question is, why is it not that easy when it's you? Like, don't you control yourself? Don't you control what you put in your mouth? You control what you put in your body? You control what you say? You control what you think? Like, you have control. But see, a lot of you think that you you act like a, like powerless people. Oh, I can't control that. Well, that's just how I am. Well, I don't know why I can't stop acting like this. I don't know. I just get angry at times. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You're acting like you're two people. you acting like it's a part of you that you can't control. And I'm here to talk to you tonight because I want you to integrate yourself. You're one person, big head. Okay. You're one person. You're one person. Stop talking to yourself like you're two people. Why do I keep doing that? What do you mean why you keep doing that? Because you want to do it. That's why you do it. I don't know why I keep fucking up like this. Because you want to fuck up. That's a garbage mind. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? And some of you, I'm just looking at the comments here. Some of you spend more time just complaining, you know. Let me explain complaining. You know, anytime you talk about everything that's negative in your life. Oh, I lost it. This happened to me. This happened to me. This happened to me. You know what a baby does when the baby doesn't get what he wants? It just cries. Wham, 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 because he can't talk yet. Like a small baby at one years old can't talk, so you just cry. You don't know what the fuck they want because they just keep fucking crying. You're like, you want food? You want to pat you on the back? You want to run around? So, you know, it just drives you crazy. But a lot of you, that's how you are when you, when you whine. You go, oh, this happened to me, and this happened to me, and I thought this was going to work, and I thought this is this and this, this, this. And I'm thinking to myself as your mentor, I'm like, well, what do you want? You keep fucking crying to me about what's happening and this happening. You did this and you did this and you thought this was going to happen. And I'm like, well, what do you want? Well, I want money. Focus on that then. I want a better life. Focus on what a better life means to you. I want to be happier. Decide to be happy right now. Think about happy things. That's how simple it is, honestly. But you, all of you guys, you make it difficult. Because you get so deep in your misery and you don't realize your misery is your own individual creation. Listen, you can spend time on my life here and listen, you can cry all you want. You know, you can be, um, you know, upset. You did this. I mean, I have some people that complain about some of my program. I bought your program. It didn't work for me. This happened to me and it scammed me and blah, 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 blah. And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, I said, well, what do you want? Well, I want it to work. Well, why didn't it work for you? Well, I don't know. Well, maybe because you didn't use it. Maybe you didn't just take your time to go through the process. See, what you don't realize, and this is what I'm trying to help you, all of you. You're crying and bitching and complaining. It doesn't help, man. I mean, listen, you can write negative blog. I've had people write negative blogs about me, negative videos about me, uh, write to the BB about me. I'm still fucking rich. So what? Like they do it on Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos old Amazon. He has more negative reviews than me. McDonald's. More negative reviews than me. 
that's a piece of shit. For, even I don't eat McDonald's. Still billions of dollars a month. Do you get it? I mean, I, I just want all of you that spend so much time in your misery and complaining and bitching and crying and moaning online, on the phone to people. What I'm saying, it doesn't affect the rich and wealthy. It doesn't affect them. And I know you want it to affect us. You want us to break down and, oh, my God, I can't believe this happened to you. And, oh, maybe I did something. Nah, we're not like that. Because we understand, like like myself, I am doing my best to provide service to people, intentionally to do good. And unfortunately, some people are not going to view it that way because of a variety of reasons. But for anybody and all of you, for you to spend time to complain and bitch, that's moving you away from what you want. Does that make sense? That's only going to increase the gap. If you don't believe me, keep living. I've never met a person that made a million dollars that bitches and complains about anything. Okay? Because think about it. See, certain people, and I want you to think deeply about this, people that complain... They continue to complain, continue, 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 continue. And they want to prove to you that their complaints are justifiable. So they don't stop. They just keep on. This happened and this happened and this happened. But what they don't realize, it never changes their situation. Like the person that you're complaining about, if you bought a product or a service, they're still wealthy. They're still rich. They're still living their beautiful life. And to you, your complaints may be justifiable. But what I want you to understand is it's only moving you further away from the goal. Okay. People that write complaints on the Internet or negative reviews, those people are not making millions of dollars. I mean, I don't know any successful and I know a lot of successful people. I don't know anyone writing negative reviews about shit to spend time tearing down people. I don't care how justifiable it is. And they like, think about Oprah Winfrey. They talk about her, talk about her. Do you ever see her respond? You see this billionaire woman respond to Amazon CEO when they talk about him, uh, the labor, you, you're working people too hard, you're not paying people. You ever see him respond to that bullshit? Never. Okay? Never. Next question for me, folks. Next question here. And let me share something for all of you. Now, this is important. And I want every man, every woman that's listening to, listening to me right now to understand that if you ever want to cross over, you know, six or seven to eight figures, never side with the complainer. It's going to be a part of you that anytime when you look at a person's product or service or even when you're following somebody, when someone is negative, we tend to gravitate to negative testimonials or anything negative about anything. You ever did that when you go on the Internet and, you know, you look at reviews? It could be great. Five star reviews and you got one review. Ah, oh, this person, they scam me. They treat me like shit. Oh, man, I can't do that. Be careful. Be careful about that. If you allow one complaint... Two complaints, three complaints to persuade you or to transform your thinking to make a decision about something that can be beneficial to you. You're doing yourself a disservice. You got to be very careful with that. Because typically as people, we believe that you know, we hear the, the old phrase, too good to be true. So anytime we believe things are too good to be true, we're looking for the negative. And we're looking for somebody to complain. Oh, man, they did that to you? Oh, my God, you know, man, I'm glad you said that, man. I knew it was something up. Ain't nobody that, and I know, I know rich people. They all scam people. I know rich people. They're never doing the right thing, man. See, I, I thank you for letting us know. I've seen people on the Internet, just fucking dummies. They thank other people. They say, hey, this person scammed me. Oh, thank you so much for posting that. Man, now I'm not going to do business with that. Oh, now I'm not going to do this. And what you don't realize <coughs> is you listening to a person that's probably more poorer than you. They're going to kill your efforts and desire to do anything. 
Because if you have the thought pattern that everything is a scam, everything is wrong, rich people steal from people, pastors steal from the um, parishioners, politicians steal from the people, the whole system is fucked up, then where is the desire in you to want to do anything? It diminishes. You with me? It just diminishes. Because you'll have the belief that, you know, man, rich people, they're always doing something wrong. There's no rich people doing the right thing. They are doing some bullshit. They just scamming. They just taking people's money on the internet, man. I ain't got time for that. You know what? I don't even want to be rich, man. Just I'm just going to make my money and that's it. Because, you know, to be rich is to do the wrong thing and they just scamming people. And many of you, just that's the belief that you have. And that's why you don't have a drive or desire to be rich because you have a definition that to be rich and to wealthy is to do something wrong, to do something underhand, to mis- to be mischievous. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Of course, some people do scam. Some people are mischievous, but every- not everybody. But what I want you to understand, if you get other people to make you think or to convince you to think that, you know, we all scammers are out here and we all doing the wrong thing. What's going to compel you to do anything you want? Does that make sense? You won't do anything. Okay. Any questions for me? Is it? Are you guys getting value here? Are you taking notes? I just want to know if you're taking notes. And listen, I'm here to educate you. I'm not here to berate you or to talk down to you. That's why people listen to my rants. You might say, well, West is only 53, 53 people. Yeah. 53 people that have made a decision that my content is necessary. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful for that. But some of you, whatever you do, if you had only 50 people, 5 people, 10 people, you'd be like, man, this thing ain't working. Ain't nobody listen to me. Ain't nobody buy my products. Ain't nobody buy my services. <laughs> You'll be complaining, right? Man, I don't know, I got a website, I got a product, no one buying my stuff. You be fucking complaining, not me. You see the difference? I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the 53, because it used to be five. I'm grateful, like, I'm grateful. You know why? Because every person matters to me. Like, the people that spend time listening to this type of information, they're, they're the part of the 5%. That eventually will be the 1% if they keep listening and keep applying the information. Everybody matters. 53 and 53 million people. So why would I bitch and complain and be like, oh, there's only 53 people, man. Nobody watching my stuff. It is people watching my stuff. 53 people. If I start bitching and complaining about that, then the 53 people who have decided to watch and listen, they're like, well, what about me? Am I, don't, don't I mean something to you? Don't I mean something? I'm here. See, that's why a lot of you don't get it. You're not grateful for where you are. You don't understand that you are your biggest enemy, 100%. You're the reason why you're suffering. You're the reason why you're miserable. You're the reason why you bitch and complain. I don't care if you say it's somebody else's fault. And I don't give a fuck if you prove it. You may prove it. Look, look, it is. It's not my fault. See? Okay. It's not your fault. But it's your problem to find a solution for. So why act like an adolescent child and try to play the blame game? That's what some of you adults do. Well, they did this. They did this to me. And that's why I'm like, they did this. They did this. They took my money. They did, they, 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 they. Okay, great. What do you want they to do? They is not going to do shit for you at all. You still are in the same situation, same house, same amount of money, same debt, same fucked up habits, same vices. So what are you talking about? Okay, you blame the person. You proved it, that they were wrong. Now what? Do you think that person changing is going to fix your issues? No. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? You know, honestly, I hope you're getting this. Though. I hope you're understanding because this is how life works. And you're either going to be a winner in life or a loser. It's no in between, by the way. You're either a winner in life or you a loser. Losers complain, bitch, cry, moan, worry, whatever. Winners, 
They know they're going to win. They don't care what happens in life. They just know that whatever they're going to do, they're going to win. They don't care if it's one year or 10 years. It doesn't matter to them. A winner, when you have the identity of a winner, you can put that person in any scenario, any environment, any country, any city, any province, any family. Doesn't matter. And they just win. Why? Because of how they think. That's it. I was watching a little TikTok. Patrick Mahomes, he plays football for the Seahawks, right? I don't watch sports, but, you know, I like superstars in action. And Patrick Mahomes, he says, there are people teasing me about how I talk. Tease me all my life. I sound like Kermit the Frog, blah, 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 blah. And it's okay. This is what this man said, the world champion quarterback, the best quarterback on the goddamn planet right now, right? He said, it's okay. He said, maybe somebody will pay me a lot of money because I have a unique voice. I just realized I have a very unique voice. So maybe one day I get a sponsorship and they'll pay me a lot of money. Now, what did this man do? He took what people are using to tear him down, to make him feel like shit. He's taken that and he has transformed that into a positive. Yeah. He wasn't like, I can't believe they talked about my voice like that. I can't control my voice. That's just how it is. I don't know why people, he didn't do that. He just laughed. He said, it's okay. They always tease me even since I was younger. <laughs> That's a thinking, folks. That's a mindset. Same thing I did. Like my last name is Virgin. People sometimes ask me, is your, your name really virgin? I'm like, yeah. Why would I lie about my last name? Why would I, like, call myself virgin on per? You know, people teased me all the time. Wesley is a virgin. They gave me a middle name when I was in high school. Used to call me a virgin. You know, like, like, I don't know. I didn't see what the big problem was. And in my mind, I was like, well, at least I'm a pure person. I'm pure. I've been untouched. That means any woman I marry, she'll be a virgin for the rest of her life. They'll call her Mrs. Virgin. She untouched. Ain't nobody touched that thing at all. So that's a blessing to be a virgin. So I love my name. You know, even they, they dog me out. They tease me, talked about me, tried to make me feel like shit. But it never bothered me. I don't know. It just was way in a big deal. And as you can see, it worked to my benefit. See, listen, folks. It's just the way that I think. You have to change the way that you think about what's taking place in your life on the way to your dream or your goal, period. You can either take information, you can use it to benefit you, or you can use it and it will destroy you. It will keep you where you are forever. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Questions for me here. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Questions for me. <sighs> Do you think I should be writing my visions down every day? Or is listening to my visions good as well? Listening. Let me tell you what I did. Let me tell you what I did before I... Before I made my first million, I've shared this story before and then we share it again. So you understand it. Listen close. And this is for anybody that want to make a million dollars. I'm telling you, to get rich and wealthy. I'll tell you exactly what I did. And I didn't have a lot of money, by the way. I was in my early 30s. How many of you are in your 30s right now? Well, you want to listen very close. Doesn't matter your age as long as you do it. <clears throat> I used to go to a gym by the name of 24 Hour Fitness here in Houston, Texas. And I'll go there every day. And then one day I started to go to a gated community by the name of Royal Oaks. If you live in Houston, Texas, a very wealthy neighborhood, period. It's just rich folks back there. So I got through the gate. I lied and said I was a personal trainer that let me in. I drove my little 1988 Honda Accord every night. Now, listen, I did this every day, by the way. And I went to a park. They have a park back there, right? And I would sit at the park. No one was there, and I would write down my goals, write down my dreams as if I have already achieved them, which means I was writing, I, I didn't write, 
I want this. I said, I'm so grateful now that I earned this amount of money. I'm so grateful now that I have these cards. So I was writing the story for my life. They called it scripty. All right. And then I would take what I wrote and I would walk around this track. It wasn't a track, but it was like grass area in the park. And I would recite it for like 30 minutes. Okay. And I would come at the next day, day two. I would open up my journal, right, day two, and I would write down what I wanted again. And the same thing, I would walk around that neighborhood for 30 minutes, and I would repeat it. I did that for a year. More than a year, ladies and gentlemen. And I didn't miss one day. Okay, now, the question is, why would I do that? Okay? You know, why would I do that for a year? A boy, actually. <clears throat> because I understand that everything that I believe today is from something that I did in the past. So if I wanted new beliefs, I had to give myself new commands and a new vision. Okay, does that make sense? I had to give myself a new vision. And if I want to give myself a new vision, I understood that I had to be very repetitive. I had to repeat the process over and over again because I had to drill these beliefs or these new beliefs and new commands in my mind so my mind will understand this is the new West. The old West is done. Does that make sense? So that's what I did. And a couple of years later, I made millions. Okay. So I said, they'll let you in that community that many times? Absolutely. See, one thing, folks, <clears throat> some of you are scared to go to the Lamborghini dealership, but you want a Lamborghini. Some of you want to go to a, you want to have a Rolls Royce, but you're scared to go to a Rolls Royce dealership. Some of you want to buy Gucci and Versace, but you're scared to go to the stores, right? Why? Why are you afraid? The reason why you're afraid, because you have low self-esteem. Low self-esteem means you just don't think highly of yourself. You don't think you belong there. You think people are going to talk about your teas? You and say you don't have money, right? That's what you think because that's what you think deeply about yourself anyway. So when I went to the gated community, I knew I was supposed to be there. And I communicated that way, which means is when I rolled up, they said, hey, my name is Wesley Virgin. I'm training a couple of people in the back here. Here's my license. Hey, how are you doing today, man? I like your hair. And that's how I was speaking, just like that, with authority, with certainty, as if I belonged there. I'm like, hey, um, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just trying to go in the back. Well, sir, what do you have business with? Uh, um, I, like a lot of you, that's how you will pull up to the gated community. Listen, if you want to live in a gated community, you need to speak and act as if you belong there. Does that make sense? You want a Lamborghini? Well, go to the goddamn Lamborghini dealership now. You don't have to wait. Why? Why are you so afraid to go to the Oh, I don't have any money. I can't afford that. And you never will with that attitude. To, look, I, told, I told my son this the other day. I said, son, to be successful, you have to project the image of success first. You have to project the image of success. You can call it fake, a myth It's not real. Who cares? But you need to project it. That people, when they see you, when they're around you, they feel that you are something, that you're successful, that there's something about you. I don't know, but it's your aura that I want to be around this person. This person, they got their shit together. And maybe you're in debt. Maybe you got bad credit. Maybe you think everything in your life is fucked. You probably have a futon, an air mattress in your house. Doesn't matter. When you leave your home, you got to project the image of success every day, all day. You go to the Lamborghini dealership. Hey, my name is Wesley Virgin. I'm looking at an STL here. I see that you guys have it on the website here for three hundred and forty-nine thousand. Am I correct? Yeah. Could you find me a salesman, please? I'm thinking about getting it today. I'm looking at a few dealerships, and you're my first one. How hard is that? Like, think about it. How difficult is that to do? You want to buy a new house? You know what I used to do when I wanted to buy big houses? <clears throat> I went to this, like Royal Oaks. They have a little place, a little building where you go to actually buy the home, design the home. I went there and said, hey, my name is Wesley Virgin. 
I've been looking at the um, homes here in Royal Oaks for the last couple of months here. And I think I'm going to make a decision to buy a home because you showed me a property. They did. Show me a property. I went in this property. I met the builder, the builder's home. It was beautiful. It was three stories. Had a pool up top. I'm broke. I'm sitting at the table with these people. Say, hey, how are you guys doing here? So, yeah, I think we want to move. You know, let me know what the next steps are. And then I sat with I sat with the interior decorator. I sat with the designer, the builder, everybody. I'm broke. No one knew I was broke. I said, okay, what do we do here? I said, well, first thing, Mr. Virgin, we got to get the blueprints and see what exactly what you want. The blueprint's going to be about eighty thousand dollars. I said, okay, no problem. Honestly, hundred percent. I was acting as if I was getting ready to buy that home. Those people thought I was wealthy, thought I was rich. They just thought I was something. Why? Because how I carried myself. Many of you carry yourself as desperate, poor, average losers. And that's why people treat you that way. Because that's the way you act. It's not because you don't have money. It's not because you don't have the right opportunity or the right mentorship. It's how you carry yourself, how you speak, how you talk. Okay? How you walk. How you... Your mannerisms when you are around people. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Okay? You know, I hear all, all you folks with your goals and dreams. Oh, Wes, I want a penthouse. Have you been to one yet? Why haven't you looked online in your city for a penthouse? Just 10, 15, 20,000 a month, whatever. Who cares how much it is? Why haven't you done a tour? It doesn't cost any much free. Why haven't you done it? You don't have to buy it. You want to buy a Mercedes? Why haven't you test drive the Mercedes Benz yet? Hello? What? You want to fly first class? Well, go, go on United Airlines and book a flight, but don't don't pay for it, but book it. See what the cost is. Like, pretend that you're actually booking a flight to Paris. You want to go to Paris? Potentially book one to Paris. Go to American Airlines. Go to Emirates. Just type it online. See how much that cost is to go to Dubai. It's $25,000 to go to Paris. So what? Just see it. Just feel it. Pull it. Put in your name. Maybe you can't put in your card information, but at least you can put everything up until that. But I want you to see how it feels just to book it. People, listen, there are people on this planet that book flights for $25,000 every single day. Round trip. There are people that book hotels $5,000 a night for a month. Every day, four seasons. There are people that go to dealerships and they buy the car of their dreams every day. $400,000, $500,000. There are people right now who are paying a car note that's $9,000 per month. More than your rent, more than your bills, more than the amount of money you make per month. They're paying it every single month with, with ease. Right now. Hello? Some woman is buying a Chanel purse for $8,000, $10,000, $20,000, 30000 $100,000. Someone is doing it right now. Do you not understand that? You're just around the wrong people. People have maid services every day in their house to clean their homes. People have chefs that they pay ten, twenty thousand dollars a month for. People have drivers and security. I'm just, just letting you know this is happening, okay. And I'm thinking to myself, why not you? Because that's what I said about myself. I said, why not me? Sheesh. Why not me? Why cannot drive a four hundred thousand dollar car? I mean, why not? They doing it, so why not? Why not me? That's the only justification that I needed. Like, why not me? I want everybody to come in the word. Why not me? Comment, why not me? Like, think about it for a second. Why not you? Okay? Like, why can't you do this? Why, why not? Hmm. <sighs> Folks, I love you. Okay. And this is the reason why I do this. It's my purpose, man. I love it. I just love helping people. I love sharing the knowledge. 
Because this esoteric knowledge is just not pervasive. It's available, but it's not so visible. Okay? To get this type of information that's organized the way that I am able to articulate it to you. Okay? And um, this is the stuff you, you need to hear. And I want you to understand how abnormal, rich, and successful people are. I understand that I am a very abnormal man. I'm not normal. I'm not average. You know why I'm not normal? Because I pay $14,000 a month to stay in a penthouse. How many people you know that pay $14,000 a rent every month? Do you know anyone personally? I have eight cars. My car notes are about $10,000 a month for two. How many people do you know pay $10,000 a month every single month to, to, to not even drive the car? You know, some of my cars I don't drive because I forget because I travel all the time, so I'm not even driving most of them. Like, how many of you know people that's spending 5000 a month to not drive a vehicle? You might think it's crazy. You say, that's insane, man. What? That's just a waste of money. Right? Because I'm abnormal, obviously. Are you with me here? Okay. <clears throat> it's abnormal to fly around the world first class. Because <clears throat> many of you say, I'm not spending money on first class. I can use that for my vacation. I can use that. Why, when I land in Mexico, in Jamaica, in Paris, whatever. Mm -mm. I'm like, nah. People that make statements like that, they've never flew first class, obviously, because first class is very comfortable, and I need to be comfortable. If I'm going to fly 8, 10, 13 hours, I need to lay down and relax and have a nice drink, water, or some crayon apple. Watch me a couple of movies at work and connect to the internet. Yeah. That's just me personally. Because I'm just not normal. So make a decision, folks. What do you want to be? You want to be normal or abnormal? A lot of you are here, oh, that's not normal. That's not normal. Yeah. Duh, stupid. I know it's not normal. Okay? Because I'm not normal. Any questions for me before I let you go? Any questions for me? Thank you for the likes and shares. If you got any value here tonight. Okay. Thank you for the likes and thank you for the shares. Questions here. Do you think, do you drink coffee? Um, not really. West, what is the best way to maximize attendance of Affiliate West? Oh, so, yeah, if you go to Affiliate West, let me, well, I think it's already passed, but if you go to Affiliate West, this is how you do it. Uh, for all of you that, that doesn't know what Affiliate West and Affiliate East is, it's an internet marketing seminar that takes place in New York and Vegas. This year was in Vegas. I haven't been in a while. I've just been busy. But um, to get the, the best out of it is, one, don't go to all these sessions. Okay? Don't do that. Two, you need to know what you... You need to know in advance who you want to meet before you go. Like, you should already know the niche that you're in. If you're in a weight loss niche... Well, obviously, you want to meet weight loss people, right? Okay? Like, if you're in a weight loss niche, you want to meet weight loss people. If you're in the um, self-help niche, you want to meet those type of people. So you need to go already. I've done your research. So when you go, you're going to meet the people. And usually when you, log, when you buy these tickets, they have a Facebook group. You can browse through the Facebook group. You can see who's there. 
so you can make a decision on who you want to meet and who you want to connect with. All right, you want to be focused. You don't want to go to a bunch of seminars that they're going to sell you on shit at the end of the seminar. Because that's what they do. It's a pitch fest. They're going to pitch you on everything. And you're a dumbass. You're going to just be buying shit and buying shit and not even using shit. Right? You're going to be buying everything. Oh, my God, this is the next thing. I went to that seminar. I just spent a $1,000 on this product. This is it. I know. No, 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 no. That's what the losers do at those seminars, to be honest with you. Right? Because remember, it's like thousands of people, but maybe... 2% 2% are actually successful making a million dollars. Even making 100000 I mean, no one's making money at these things. Right? <clears throat> so, you've got to be very strategic. You need to know who you're going to meet. You can meet most of these people at the bar. Just go to the bar. Go to the parties, man. Just go. Right? Have a good personality. Be happy. Smile. No one needs to know that you're broke. No one needs to know that you're suffering. Don't do that. That's the worst. Don't start a conversation with someone that's wealthy. Oh, man, I'm trying to make this work, but it's... Nah, 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 don't do that. They're going to say, hey, hey, don't talk business. Say, hey, hey, just relax. Go have a drink. Right? Introduce yourself. Hey, my name is blah, 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 and I have a have a, a great company. It's doing fairly well. You know, blah, blah, blah. What do you do? Make sense? That's it. Just start asking questions here. But never downplay what you're currently doing. Always exaggerate what you're doing. Oh, listen, always exaggerate. <laughs> like, Period. Always. I don't care if you're making zero dollars. No, no, no. You're making like ten, twenty thousand dollars a month. Period. Always exaggerate what you're currently doing. Okay. Always, because that's how you sell yourself. Exaggerate. That's what salespeople do best. They exaggerate everything. Right. Learn to be a professional exaggerator. Make it better than what it really is. That's why people buy Rolls Royce. Some person sold people like myself. Right. Why it's better to spend four hundred spend four hundred thousand dollars for a car, you know? That's not rational behavior, right? But, you know, they exaggerated it. They told a good story or whatever. Just like Louis Vuitton, Versace and Gucci and Chanel. You guys buy that shit because someone exaggerated the story about why you should buy it. Period. That's all what it is. So you need to learn how to exaggerate yourself about what you're doing to the people that you meet at these seminars. Make sense? Okay. What are your non-negotiables, Wes? I mean, what what are you talking about? Non-negotiables for what? Are the abnormal ones the rare people? Of course we are rare. How many millionaires you know? Do you know 10 millionaires that you know personally that you can call right now and text and they'll respond back? None of you do. Okay, so yeah, we're rare, obviously. What is your go-to drink in the morning? Celery juice and um, beet juice and water. Hey, Leon, how are you? Questions here. Hey, guys, smash the like and share button. If you got value, you can always tap the like, hit the share if what you're hearing makes sense to you and you have made a decision right now to apply it, okay? Just hit the like and share button. Let me see some loves. Uh, I, I do see the likes and, and shares as well. Thank you. If you want me to post this, like it and share it. I will post this so you can listen to it again. This will be uploaded to my podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well, okay? How do you know that we can't, can't do what? Can't do what, freedom? Your question doesn't make sense. I need more context. Hey guys, hello, hello, hello. Any more questions for me before I let you go? All right. Let me know because I got to go. Non-negotiable is what you do every day no matter what. Oh, drink water, eat healthy, work out, work. You're very welcome. 
And Carol, this is not encouragement. This is education. Okay, I don't want to... My goal is not to encourage you, folks, because encouragement is not going to transform your life. Education. Like, it's even in the Bible said, people perish because of lack of knowledge. Period. Right? So knowledge is the key. The application of the knowledge is the key that unlocks the door. Make sense? You can't just have a key. You know, people say, give me the keys. Well, you can't have a key unless you know which door to put the key in. Make sense? So the knowledge is the key. Applying the knowledge is applying the right door that the key goes in that it will unlock your dreams and your goals. Okay? Okay, folks, if you enjoyed yourself tonight, can you come to where value below, please? How was Vegas? Did you win loads of money? No, but my girl did. She killed it. All right, folks. I got to go. The closer I get to these people, the more I feel myself elevating. Are you a member of any financial collectives? The people? No. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you for the value. All right, guys. Much love. I'll see you tomorrow. This is Wesley, Billion Dollar Virgin. Much love, and let's go.